Welcome to Morocco. <laughs> Thanks, Mohammed. Welcome. Guys, wait for me. Hi, guys. It's John here, and I'm from the UK. I am a massive fan of touring as a form of travel, and this particular tour I'm on with Intrepid covers a huge variety of Morocco. So our journey started in Casablanca where we met the group. We then headed south along the border between Morocco and Algeria until we reached the Mazuga camp in the famous Sahara Desert. We then headed west towards the coast in Essaouira, stopping off in the Todra Gorge and Ait Ben Hadou along the way, completing one of the most epic treks of my life through the gorge and along the top after finishing the tour at the end in the bustling markets of Marrakesh. Just going to get my headscarf done by Tarek. All right. All right. Ready? I'm ready. <laughs> Done. <laughs> Done. That's it. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> Ta-da! That looks great, John. Does it? <laughs> Tarek, you have an artist about you. Ah, oh, thank you. The headscarf, which is called a tangle must, is usually blue or indigo in colour. It's worn by Berber men for both religious and practical purposes and it's only taken off in the presence of close family. Thank you. I feel very Moroccan now. Berbers are the indigenous people of North Africa and live in an area that stretches from Egypt in the east to the Sahel zone in the west. The Berber culture dates back more than 4,000 years they speak their own languages and make up 40% of the Moroccan population. So we've just arrived in the Mazuga Desert and now we're in a camel conga line. Going through the sand dunes. there in time for dinner. So we're not quite back at base camp yet, we just finished this is the sand dune we're up and Mohammed here has just uh, helped me climb up. He's much better at climbing than I am, he's so fast. But yeah the camp's whoa, just down there. Zoom in, here we go. There's a the man. <laughs> Welcome to Morocco! <laughs> Thanks, Mohammed. Welcome. All right, let's get back to camp. Mint tea is everywhere in Morocco. In the light-hearted and joking way that Moroccans have, they refer to their national beverage as Berber whiskey. It can be drunk without sugar, but they usually drink it with sugar, and it's sweetened with sugar cubes that are bigger than golf balls. We ended the beautiful day at an oasis. I've been lucky enough to go on a few amazing road trips, but this journey has to be one of, if not my absolute, favourite in the world. Todra Gorge is located in the eastern part of the High Atlas Mountains. Food was simple here, but really tasty, consisting of bread, honey, almond butter, jam, yoghurt, eggs, nuts and grains, all fresh produce that they've made themselves from their own fields and livestock. This was a really good meal to start the day of long trekking through the gorge. So the running theme of uh, these vlogs seems to be I'm either out of breath, sweaty or both. <laughs> but yeah, at the moment we're hiking through the incredible Todra Gorge uh, near the town of Tinger. Um The group's just ahead of me, just up there. But um, yeah, I thought I'd just stop and try and show you this incredible place. We got up pretty early, um, about half seven in the morning, and then we've, we've started the the hike at eight o'clock. Um, we've been going for about an hour now and it's supposed to be four to five hours long. Uh, but yeah, it's absolutely stunning scenery. I feel like I'm on Mars or something somewhere. Um, everything's like amazing and orange and rocky. And it's just, yeah, just the sheer height of these these gorges are just, is just incredible. But yeah, so I'm gonna plow on. Yeah, the group. Head of me just there. Hopefully I'll catch up soon. But yes. Okay. It's amazing, there's no one else around. It's so quiet, it's like no wind. The sun beaming through. Oh, it's really, really cool. Reminds me of you know, like the Grand Canyon or 
Jordan or something like that. But yeah, it's really, really cool. Right, I should probably catch up with the group now because I'm really far away. <sighs> right, let's go. Guys, wait for me. Yes, it's me waiting for the group now, not the group waiting for me. Ah. To seeing where and how they lived with what little possessions they had and what little they actually needed was a life enriching experience I wouldn't have wanted to miss. So we just stopped at this Berber village for some tea midway through the hike. Um, we're going to carry on now, but uh, I'm just going to thank the man. Zaha. Bye. this morning and we went through Wazazet and the Atlas Mountains and now we're in a place called Ait Ben Hadou. Uh, Ait Ben Hadou is like a very old, very famous Casper uh, built on the centre of sort of a big hill rock formation and um, with a river running around it. Now it's not the time of the year for the river, it's all dried up at the moment, but let me just spin it round. Our terrace has an amazing view of it. Check this out. Really cool. So the entrance is just there, and then you can walk up through the Casper, through all the maze of houses and little tunnels and rooms, up to the top, and there's a really cool view out. But yeah, this is our terrace. And you get a view over the whole valley. Really, really cool. We're going to go explore it at around 6, 6 p.m. this evening because it's too hot to go out there at the moment. Um, but yeah, really looking forward to walking up, up there to the top. So yes, I will see you up there. The village was on a stop along the ancient Sahara trade route where traders would pause to rest on their way to Timbuktu or the Western Sahara. The UNESCO declared Ait Ben Hadou a World Heritage Site in 1987, as well as Hollywood who also discovered the sheer beauty of the place and shot movies like Lawrence of Arabia, Gladiator and Alexander here. The High Atlas is just incredible to drive through, where you turn a corner and you see a huge mountain, you think, wow that's gotta be the biggest one there, and then you turn a corner and then there's an even bigger one, and another one, and another one, it is just ridiculous. The road you drive on takes you through the heart of the Atlas, so you never miss an epic view of the surroundings and you're never ever bored. Okay, we're in a pit stop now, um, go through the Atlas Mountains and check out all of these stickers. Oh. Oh. So 
So we've just arrived at our homestay we're staying in, in uh, the foothills of Tubkal. Uh, we're walking down the riverbed right now, we're just on a quick uh, jaunt around before dinner. And uh, this, during the winter, is a raging river, but at the moment it's all dried up. You can see Tubco just behind me there, and I'm just walking with a couple of the guys from the group. But yeah, very, very cool. Spin it around. I mean, I can't really see the scale too well, but Tubco just here. Tallest mountain again in North Africa, 4,165 meters or 4,200 meters high. And we head in now, spinning our heads behind. And we are spinning. So we get a view of both Tibkal and Imlil down this whole valley. Oh, one of the best passes I've ever stayed for sure. So an early morning hike this morning. Oh, it's pretty windy up here. We go up at around 6 a.m. and we left at about half six. And we're walking through the valley, through the riverbed, and up towards Tubkal. We can't quite go up to the top today, but around, I reckon, around 3,000 meters high at the moment. Um, and there's a shrine uh, right at the top. So we're just heading to that now, if you spin it around. Just up there. Just there. And there's How's it going, man? Is your hay good? Seems to be pretty happy. Cool. So, let's go, let's do the last look stretch. The summer months are the busiest times to visit the Tubkal National Park. It is one of the best times also as the majority of the park is covered in a thick blanket of snow during the winter. Of course, the mountains are cooler than the desert plains, but you will still need to be prepared for the searing heat. We were lucky enough to have an excellent tour guide while hiking who took us out very early in the morning because as we arrived back into our accommodation at just 11am we could already feel the heat of the sun beaming down on us. So, to summarise, this tour was an amazing way to see as much of the key destinations in Morocco that were possible on the duration of the tour. We never felt rushed off our feet and had plenty of free time to explore at our own leisure. I've been lucky enough to come to Morocco on my own before, but it really makes a difference having a local, knowledgeable and well-organised tour guide and driver with you to make the country a little less daunting and a lot more accessible. If you're interested in exploring Morocco for yourself, head over to the Tour Radar website or watch this video about Tarek, the guide on my tour with Intrepid Travel. Make sure you subscribe to stay tuned for more travel inspiration and to keep up with my escapades around the world.